Mr. Scholes, in an interview from a very long, long time ago, like 20 years ago, you described your ideal day as train in the morning, pick up your children from school, play with them, have tea, put them to bed, and then watch a bit of TV. How does your average or ideal day look now? Uh, well, my kids are a bit older now, so <laughs> there's no school to go to anymore. Um, well, uh, in all honesty, I would like to be doing the same thing, but obviously I'm a, a little bit older now. Um, contains a bit of golf, I, I suppose, a bit of TV stuff when the Premier League is back and, and the European fixtures are back. Um, I'm quite relaxed. I still have my children are now 25, 23 and 19, so they still keep me busy, but in, in slightly different ways. You spent your entire career at Manchester United. Do you ever wonder what it might have been like to play for another club? Not really, no. Um, I never needed to move to another club and right on my doorstep was the biggest club in the world. A very successful team as well during the years I was there. And as long as Manchester United wanted me, then I, I would never have moved to another club. Obviously there are some thoughts sometimes of you know, what, what would have happened if I'd have gone to a Spain, Italy or another football club, what would that experience have been like? But in all honesty, I, I don't regret anything. I, I'm glad it, it never had to happen. And I, I, I was very happy winning trophies and playing for the biggest club in the world, which was already on my doorstep. Yeah, and you were part of the famous class of 92. What do you think made that group of players so special? It's a good question. I, uh, I think we were obviously a talented group of lads. We were together from being probably 15, 16 years of age. It's not something that happens a lot before or in the future in the Premier League. We knew we were good because we were, we were winning all the time. I don't want to make that an ar arrogant way that I knew we were good, but we knew there was something, something special, I think, about this team that we, we had because, as I said, we, we were winning every week. We never really knew how good we were you know, on, a, on a national level, but once we got to 18, 19 years of age, I think we all started steadily dripping into the first team and out. And the manager, as, a, as we know, was one for giving youth a chance. And, he, he, he cleared out the decks really to, to bring us into the team. He, ob he obviously thought that we could be successful and you know, we needed to repay him with, um, with, with what he did for us and hopefully we, we managed to do that over the 15, 20 years that we were playing for him. When you hear the name Sir Alex Ferguson, what is the first thing that comes to mind? Uh, what do you remember most about him? Um, well, so Suji said his name and then I, I, I smiled actually. Um, just a, a great experience be, being around him. He was the best. Um, we saw him build a team that won the Premier League for the first time in, in such a long time. I think it was something like 28 years. So we, we were looking from from afar really and then to to be able to work with him w was special. It was you know, not something we probably all expected to do, but to win with him, to work for him. And it was, it was his honesty more than anything. I think you always knew where, where you stood with him, whether it was good or bad, you, you knew. Um, a very personable man as well, you know, if it wasn't just all about football, he cared about your family and what, what else was, anything that was going on in, in your home life as well. But to be able to play to one, one of the very best managers the world has ever seen was a a great privilege and I, I find myself very lucky to, to have been able to do it. You announced your retirement in 2011 and then decided to come back uh, almost a year later for uh, one more season. What led you to make that decision? I'd, I'd, I'd spoke to the manager before the end of the season and I told him I wanted to, re to retire. He, he thought it was a mistake, he thought he could still get 15, 20 games out of me, out of a season which probably contained 50 games. But I didn't want to do that. I felt that 15, 20 games just wouldn't be enough for me. Um, so I decided to retire and I ended up training every day. Um, I just joined in with them and felt fit. The team was struggling around the Christmas time after I, I'd retired and they had no midfield players really. So I decided to go and see the manager and say, look, I, I, I wanted to come back and, uh, and play again. I had no idea what he was going to say, what his reaction would be, but thankfully for me, it was a positive one and 
I managed to play for another 18 months before retiring again. Yeah, playing styles and training methods have changed a lot since you retired and so have uh, players' lifestyles. What do you think is the biggest difference between players' lifestyles then and now? I think the biggest difference between then and now is social media. It wasn't around when, when we were playing. Um, I'm not sure how some of us would have been able to handle the criticism that, that is probably there around that time. I think you have to admire, play now, admire players now. They can't really get away with anything. Whatever they do is filmed. Um, wherever they go, you know, there's, there's somebody with a microphone in the face or somebody with a, a camera in the face or somebody writing something on, on social media. And that would have been something to totally alien to us, but that, that's just the day and age now. That's the way football is and that's something they have to deal with. And I think in the main, most players do deal with that very well. How do you feel when you watch Manchester United today? Are you still emotionally attached to the club? Yes, of course. Every, every time I watch I, I watch every game I can do, obviously. Um, I want them to win. Uh, I want them to play well. At this point, it's a little bit difficult to watch them because finishing eighth last season was a, was a really poor year. And, we need them to be better. Manchester United is probably the biggest club in the world, along with Real Madrid, and we, we need a competitive team. Um, fans demand that. And I am just a fan now. I, I, every time I watch them, I, I want entertaining football. I want them to win games. It doesn't always happen. How would you rate Eric Ten Hag's uh, work so far? And what are your expectations for him in the future? Well, he, he's won two trophies, obviously, starting with the, with the League Cup in the first year which is you know, it's probably the, the least trophy that people expect of you uh, as a Man United manager. And then the FA Cup was, a, again, it was, a, it was an upgrade last year. Obviously, fin finishing eighth in the league was a, a big disappointment, but man being Manchester City in that cup final was a, a, a really big achievement because we know what a good side they are. I think in the future, this year especially, they need to improve in the league. There's, there's no doubt about that. They were, deficiencies in their team last year. He did have a lot of injuries, you had to give him you know, a bit of slack for that, but as Manchester United, you know, I always think about targets being winning the league, but this team, I don't think they're ready for that. I think the very, very best they can do, they can finish fourth in the league. You won 25 trophies during your playing career, including 11 Premier League titles and two Champions League titles, and I'm wondering which of these achievements has meant more to you? They, they all mean the same, I suppose. I think when, when you're a Man United player, you, you, when I was playing, you were expected to win. Expected to win trophies. Now, it's not always the case. I suppose the Champions League ones are, are special. Of course they are. I think the first time you win the Premier League is probably the, the most special because it. You know, you're always wondering, am I, am I good enough to play for this team? Or am I good enough to play for this club? And then once you're good enough to play for the club, Am I good enough to go on then and be successful and win trophies? So, just to get that first Premier League was was a relief, and then it you know almost relaxes you and and gets you ready for what is to come. More dedication towards it because you have to win. Once you win one, you have to keep on winning, and that I think that's something that defines your your career. It gives you hunger and desire to go on and do it, and that is something the manager always demanded from us. On September 1st, Manchester United will face Liverpool, the big English derby. What did this derby mean to you while you were still playing and um, how important are these matches to the players? It was the biggest game when I was playing, there's no doubt about that. I think the biggest test of a, a Man United player was can you go and play against Liverpool and beat Liverpool. They were our main rivals for, for quite some time and we felt if we beat them we have a good chance of winning the league. So. Yeah, it was always, it's always the toughest place to go, always the toughest game at Old Trafford. The rivalry was always there, the intensity was always in the games. And like I say, if, if you can show character and personality in them games and the authority to go on and, and beat these teams, it gave you then real confidence to go on and, and be successful with your team in, in the Premier League. This summer you likely watched uh, the English national team at the Euros. Uh, how would you rate their performance and what do you think was missing for them to win the final? I think overall it's quite dis disappointing because I think in England we, we really think we've got a squad of players that are capable of, uh, of winning major competitions. So the level of performance w wasn't right and 
to come up second. Look, it's still still good and it still gave us a, a good run for our money. I think Gareth's done a, a, a really good job with the squad of players, but that next step now is he's getting over the line in a, in a big competition. and I think eventually these players will be ready to do that. Paul Scholes, it was an honour speaking with you. Thank you very much and best of luck. Thank you.